Hello and welcome. It is time once again to try to fix something. And today on the workbench, I'm working on a PS4 Slim. And I've already got the covers off of it. Uh, I was not going to do a video on this one. Um, I hooked this one up and it turned on and worked perfectly. I loaded a, a disc into it, ran a game. It ran for 30, 40 minutes. I don't know. And I decided to shut it down just to clean the outer covers. Had a little dust on them. I thought I would, you know, I'd blow it out, get ready to resell the thing. I'll wash the covers. They're sitting out there. Actually, they're sitting out there in the sun drying. If you can see them on that little table. They're drying. And I also took the power supply out. Because um, it looked like the antenna connection was broken right there. Somebody had been in there. There's a screw missing. So, just doing some little, you know, clean up and normal tasks. Put it back together. I was going to let it run. While the, um, you know, the top and bottom parts were drying out there. And now... It turns on and goes right back off, if I can show you. Yeah, and no fan spin. And so anyway, I had gone back and looked at the eBay listing where I bought it to see what the problem was supposed to have been with it, and it was listed as no power. So that's why I was surprised. It turned on and ran fine. So I'm hoping, I'm guessing, maybe we have an intermittent power supply issue here. It did turn on. It did ran. I don't think there's anything wrong with this main board. It, it ran for quite a while and ran perfectly solid. Um, it's only after I pulled the supply out. You know, I just pulled it out and laid it over this way so I could get to the uh, antenna lead. Clean that up. It, was, it wasn't broken. I just thought it was. It looked like it had been popped up there. So, this could be uh, an interesting one. Um, let me get another supply swap it out uh, i'm thinking it's just the supply i'm thinking the 12 volts is not coming up but uh and when it does this when it shuts down it shuts down entirely so the standby five volts everything shuts down which makes you think power supply uh let me get another supply and we'll swap it out and see what happens all right i have found another supply to test with it's not identical to that one you know it doesn't have the uh, cutout for the uh, antenna but it has the appropriate connector it'll plug on there so i think we're good let's just see if this works any better it does and the 12 volts comes up i think the fan spins so yeah i think we're going to have a um, intermittent power spot to look at that's looking good so okay well, maybe that's the only problem but i don't have one like this so i can't just swap it out i mean i have another one you know with that uh same cutout, but it's a different, slightly different model. It has a cutout, but it has square pins. So um, it's, it's, you know, they, they've made little differences over the years just to mess with us. But okay, I think she's gonna work. Let's get this inside and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. All right, here we are. Find the appropriate screwdriver. Let's see what we can find in here. And again, I don't recommend people doing this if you're not familiar working around dangerous voltages because you can get hurt. Hopefully no roaches in this one. I'm gonna get bit if I don't. Uh, if I don't be a little more careful. Yeah, just a little dust in this one. How boring. Um, let's discharge these capacitors. Yep, 318 volts or so across there. Lead down to zero. Much better. Now this thing was not totally dead. It was trying to work. Which makes me wonder if we just have a, a bad connection. No roaches, none of that nonsense.
Now I'm probably not gonna be able to see whatever the problem is with just my eyes. Because all the joints are just way too small. Just looking around, see if there's anything obvious. Nope. All right. The microscope it is. Just seeing some dust. Let's look around some of these larger ICs. All those legs look good. That's the, um, yeah, that's the connector right there where you control it right here. So sometimes you see some cracks around some of these joints. So that one's got a little bit of a crack around. That's the ground. I don't think it's totally broke loose. It's just got a little bit of a, a little bit of a ring going on there. Probably could use a touch up. Really don't think that's our issue though. It all looks good. And whatever's doing this, which I'm guessing it the whole thing shuts down because um, if you're giving the command for the 12 volts to be up and it's suddenly not up i think the ic that's uh watching over the whole board here which i think is gonna be this one right over here it decides okay something's wrong we're going to shut everything down because it's actually it actually monitors the um the 12 volts it's monitoring you know that your control signal is coming in and it's monitoring the 12 volts coming out um and that's how I think it works. Basically, if it's, if it's if 12 volts is being called for and it's not being generated within like a, probably a, a fraction of a second, it's just going to shut it down. All these opto isolators look pretty good. Looking at the legs on them. Our LD5760, responsible for making the five volts. Don't really think this is a standby problem. Because we always seem to have five volts standby. Well, until it, you know, until it shuts the whole thing down. But otherwise, we have the five volt standby. So this is probably something to do with the 12 volt generation. And it could be a real pain to find without another board sitting beside it. But, of course, this is intermittent. It will work sometimes. So, yeah. be much easier if it would just totally quit. Okay. I guess the thing to do maybe is to... Uh, Try to power it up and see, maybe it's working and see if we can maybe flex the board and uh, get it to fail. Let me get my uh, dummy load here, DC load turned on. We can put a decent load on this. Okay. Maybe uh, six amps. Turn it on. And where is my little four wire pigtail for a slim like that right there? 
This way I don't have to hold my uh, tweezers on it. Let's see. Okay, so it's between. Get this turned the right way. And get the correct jumper. I guess if I turn this around, the five volts will be on pin one. Which is the gray wire. So if I go between that gray wire and the third one, like that, but I guess I could wait until the, until I get my standby voltage. Let's see what happens here. Let's see. AC is in, so we should have our 5 volt standby right here, and we do. Now I'm going to enable it. Let me see if I can put my probes on the 12 volts. Stay there. Let's see if she comes up. All right. Nope, nope, nope. Don't fall out of there. We're going to go from the 5 volts to the uh, enable line. We got uh, a surge in current. I heard the uh, transformer over there kind of buzz a little. But we did not get any output that I saw. And I'm going to guess at this point, she's probably gone shut into shutdown mode. Yep, bleeding off. Okay. So I'm going to guess the 12 volts did not come up for whatever reason. And we'll cycle the power on it. There's our standby 5 volts back. I tell you what I'm gonna do if I can find my test leads up here. Stuff's falling everywhere. Uh, these. Let me clip on. Because what I'd like to do is see if the. Uh, 400 volts, 390, wherever it is, is coming up across these big capacitors. The, uh, that'll tell us if the power factor correction circuit is coming on or not. Or if it's even trying to come on. What do we have? 323 volts and bleeding off, so I'm going to say the power factor correction circuit is working because we got 400 volts. So let me do this and see. Uh, use the jump wire I had earlier. Let's see if that shoots up to 400 volts. Three sixty. She's shutting down pretty quick. About 360 is about the peak I'm seeing. It seems a little low. Three sixty eight I saw that time. So it's trying to come up. Normal running, I think it's going to be closer to like 390 or something. She shuts down really fast, and I don't think we ever generated the first bit of 12 volts. Let's see if I can clip that on there. There 
you know, backwards, of course. Come on. All right, I think I'm, I think I'm in there. There. All right, I'm going to reset this. Are we getting a bump of 12 volts? Because this little uh, bar graph at the bottom will, will react faster than the numbers. Are we getting anything? Let me watch. No. No, we're not. Nothing. I'm guessing our five volts has gone away again. Yep. And if I recycle the power, 4.8. So, yeah, we're just shutting down. Our 12 volts is not even trying to come up. Hmm. But it has come up in the past and ran for several minutes. So it's likely not a dead short. It's something intermittent. Doesn't everybody love intermittents? Well, after not finding anything, any obvious, you know, breaks in solder joints, I decided to hook the supply back up and just see if it would work. And it's working at the moment. As you can see, six amps of current. She's working. Uh, so what I want to try to do is, can I tap around on it and have it quit? So let's see if we can get that in the shot. Of course, now it doesn't want to quit working. I'm flexing the board a good bit there. And of course it won't quit. Hmm. Okay, I do notice one thing odd I wanted to point out. It is still running right now, by the way. Looking at, while it was running, I wanted to check some voltages. And the main B plus on these filter caps, 333 volts, which seems low. I thought that was closer to 400. But unfortunately, I cannot find an identical model to this in my parts to compare to. But I'm, normally, the rest of my work are like 390 volts, 95, you know, real close to 400. The caps are rated to 450. And I'm thinking this thing usually runs about 400. So is that is that my issue? I don't know. I need something to compare to. But it's odd. 333 volts. Hmm. All right, I've got this uh, uh, board precariously propped up here. It is still running, as you can see, 11.8 volts. Because um, I was kind of curious about the supply voltage to this. This is the 1608. This is the power factor corrector I see. And its supply is on pin eight. And if I 
can hold it still. 12.15 volts. All right, that looks good. So it's getting plenty of supply voltage. According to the uh, data sheet, um, 12 volts is a typical supply for it. And I also checked down here on this IC. This is the IC responsible for generating the 12 volts. Uh, HR1001C, I think it is. And it is getting 11.99. Uh, there's a 39 ohm resistor between, you know, the main supply and where it goes into here. So slightly less voltage, but still basically 12 volts, which looks normal and healthy. But I, I, I can't help but think, though, that our output voltage from our power factor corrector is low. 330 volts should be closer to 400, I believe. And I think that's why it's struggling to start sometimes. So I think the... Um, most logical place to start is to swap out this 1608, which I think I do have some of those. Um, so I think I may just swap that out and see if it has any effect. Because um, it's possible we could have a bad filter capacitor. Those three, you know, 450 volt rated capacitors on the other side of the board. One of those could be failing. But looking uh, with my meter in, you know, in AC mode across those capacitors when it's running, I don't really see any tremendous ripple. Um, which I'm not sure if I'd be able to measure it because it's going to be a higher frequency component. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like, it's not going to be like 60 hertz, 120 hertz. It's going to be, I'm pretty sure that power factor corrector is running at a higher frequency because that's how it gets away with having such small coils. But anyway, um, so it is possible that there's ripple there, uh, that I can't measure. But if we have to, we'll lift those capacitors and check them. But I think, I think I'm just going to go ahead and swap this 1608. And let's see what happens then. See if our, uh, our main DC output voltage uh, goes up to close to 400 volts. Sixteen oh eight power factor corrector IC has been changed, and we're ready to see if this makes any difference whatsoever. Um, I am uh, have my load connected right over here; it's on, and I've got my meter connected across uh, these filter capacitors. These capacitors are all in parallel, by the way. Um, they use three smaller ones just for space saving. You know, you could have done it with one, but it would have been huge. So I'm monitoring that voltage. I want to see if we if we go above, you know, 330 or whatever we had earlier. So let me turn on the AC into it, and we should get 166 volts there. So that's just the rectified and and you know simply filtered voltage off of the 120 volts AC line coming in. That's what gets boosted to close to 400 volts when the power factor corrector is running. But if it's not running, you will get what passes through is 166 volts, and that's what's being used by the 5 volt circuit um, over here. Uh, yeah, there. So the the 5 volt circuit just needs 160 or whatever. Probably doesn't need that much, but it will also operate off of the 400 when the power factor kicks in. So, okay, uh, we should be ready. 
I'm going to plug this in. You see, I've got my jumper in there. We're going to see if this uh, does any good whatsoever. So, if I can get get ready. And let's monitor those two. Three forty-two. She's running, but that still seems low to me. She is running. I'm just not sure if that's correct. Because I have a feeling if we unplug this right now, you know, unplug my enable wire, that will go away, and I don't think it's going to start back up. Let me just try it. Unplug. See the voltage start kind of falling off. I'm going to re-plug it in. And it did not start back up. That's kind of what she's doing. Yeah, it's on, I have it disabled right now. And you can see there's no output voltage. And our 350 volts, whatever, is falling off. If I enable it, it just does not start back up. Interesting. But we've eliminated something. It's not that 1608 power factor corrector. It's not that. All right, we are still chasing the problem with this power supply. And we're going to be looking under the microscope in a certain area of this board. And we'll just point it out to you. Like here's our power factor corrector I see right there. We're going to be looking at this transistor, which is involved, is involved with the uh, voltage feedback to it, I believe. Let's take a look under the microscope and see if we can figure something out. Now... This, I believe, is some type of MOSFET. And I say that just because I've seen a similar circuit in other uh, power supplies, like the PS5 power supply. Um, what you have, you see these big resistors. These are all uh, two mega ohm resistors that are in series. This point uh, right here, I believe it is, is connected to the, what I think should be 395 volts. The, the main B plus output, you know, that is being filtered by those large filter capacitors. I believe it comes through here, at least uh, six, uh, six mega ohms total of resistance here, and into this MOSFET, and then out the other side, right up here, right through this zero ohm resistor, and here is pin one, which is the feedback pin of this PFC. Make sure it's in the shot there. And then you've got some resistors to ground. This is ground or common down here. And this is a 39K and a 1.3 meg, I think it is, um, in parallel. So, and this is the ground. So this would be the final return path. So I'm not exactly sure the exact function of it, but I know it's important. And it's involved with that feedback. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what model of MOSFET this is, if it's an enhancement mode or a uh, depletion mode, and I'm not sure. Um, but I'm thinking about pulling this off and see if I can figure it out and maybe pull one off another board in a similar position. That's what I'm thinking right now. So I'm going to pull this off. And see if I can determine what type, based with diode checks, what type of, uh, of MOSFET it is. All right, our tiny MOSFET has been changed out. Uh, let's see if we have done any good. Let's see, look at my load on. AC power in. Let's see if I can get this plugged in. Get where you can see the. Uh, meter nope nothing uh, let me get set up to check that voltage across the capacitors all right now i've got a meter on the uh, across the bulk bulk filter capacitors there and if i turn it on she should go to like 170 volts Something like that. And now if I enable this, 
that should go to like 395. I don't think it's going to. 360 something and then cut off. And she just shut back down. Hmm. What is going on? Okay, I may have found a board to compare to. Now, it is not identical. Uh, the board we're working on is N16160 P1A. And I did find out in the garage a very similar one. If I can read that number, N15160 P1A. And it has the little cutout for the Wi-Fi antenna. So I could just move the uh, four pin connectors. Like this board has the square pins. This one has round pins. So I'd have to swap those around. I'd rather not do that. Though. I'd rather just figure out what's wrong with this one. This is our bad one up here. This board works. This board generates 400 volts across the uh, these field capacitors. The PFC circuit puts out right at 401 volts. And it uses the same ICs, 1608 power factor corrector up here, and the uh, 1101C uh, power power management IC, you would call it, I guess. It makes, it makes the 12 volts. Um, same chips. So it, it's similar operation, but not identical. I can't really compare components because, you know, they're not the same. There, there were, some of the resistors are different. Um, so it's not a direct comparison, but it's very similar. So I think what I may do, though, is uh, remove this uh, MOSFET, although it's a different part number. Take this MOSFET, put it in that board, and see if it makes any difference. I don't know. But I do think that board should be making 400 volts and not 350, 360, whatever it's making. And... The IC is on, or the MOSFET is on, I should say. Um, let me get it ready to show you. And it does the same thing. If I enable, uh, 370 volts, and she shuts down. No change. Okay, where are we? Uh, about the same place we were. Still not working. I, I did, uh, that MOSFET that I had put in this board... You know, my original replacement. Um, but I wasn't sure if it was a, a good one or not. Uh, I put it in this board, this working board, and it worked fine. So it, it, the transistor that I put in there wasn't the problem. Because um, it's working fine in this one. This one will generate 398 volts now. The power factor corrector. This is the working one. So I need to somehow determine if this is a, a power factor correction problem or a 12 volt generation problem. And the issue is they, they come up at the same time. Basically you get 12 volts, not the same 12 volts that comes out, not the main output, it's just another 12 volt supply. That is it. That is the supply for, well, you know, uh, this IC and this one, the 1001C and that 1608 power factor record. They all get the same voltage, but the voltage to this, these two are switched at the same time by a transistor, uh, Right in maybe that one. I had to follow it, but there's a transistor that switches the supply voltage into this chip and this chip. And what I'm thinking about doing is, you know, of course, what's happening is it comes up and shuts down so fast you don't have time to check anything. I'm thinking about trying to force the P the PFC chip to run by injecting 12 volts. Um, then it won't be a switch 12 volts. I'll just force it to run. But what I'm thinking about also doing, though, is maybe not pushing 12 volts into this chip because I don't want it to run. I want to know, I want to see I want to see this make 400 volts before I, this is the good board, though. That's the other one. That's the one we'll be working on. I want to see that board make 400 volts. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I believe there is a 39 ohm resistor between that supply and where it goes into this chip. So that gives me a way of lifting that resistor and isolating this. Things. So it does not, it won't get the supply, just this one. And then we'll see if it will, you know, stay up and running and maybe we can check some things. All right. Let me give you a little update of where we are. Uh, I am wired up to 
supply voltage to the PFC IC. Um, it, needs, it needs roughly 12, 12 and a half volts. I'm connected, there's a diode on the board I'm connected, I'm connected to, so I'm gonna have to give it about 13. So you can see I got my supply set on about 13 volts. Just to overcome that diode. Um, and we're gonna see if we can make the PFC circuit run outside of anything else on here and have it run and boost that rectified DC up to 400 volts. And you can see I've got my probes here. I've got this meter looking right across the filter capacitors and there's nothing there right now. I'm going to flip on the AC voltage and we've got 157 volts roughly. So that's just the DC passing through this uh, coil. Uh, is it, I guess it's this one, yeah. The boost coil. And now I'm gonna supply 12 volts to it and we're gonna see if it will generate. And I'm just, nothing fancy on my switching. I'm just gonna plug this lead in right here and give it, uh, give the uh, PFC IC some power. And I'll get where you can see both of them. Watch what happens here. We went up to 370 volts. And then we shut down. I'm still giving it voltage. It still has everything it needs to run, but then it's choosing not to. And if I unplug this and plug it back in, you get another shot at it. Three hundred and fifty. But you see, it's shutting down. Nothing else is being powered right now. None of the logic, the control logic that would normally control this thing is, is powered up. There's no, uh, I don't think there's anything telling it to shut down other than itself. It looks like the power factor corrector I see is deciding to shut down. And if we look at this, I mean, there's only so many reasons why it would do that. And... Uh, you know, it gets, this is just an example circuit. This is not exactly what's there, but it's an example of how it works. Um, you see, it has a current sense here. It can shut down because it feels there's too much current going through this transistor. Um, it can shut down because this feedback voltage uh, doesn't come up like it thinks it should. And that's, you know, this is the circuit that I've got that, that MOSFET is in. You know, that's, they have a more complicated circuit on the board, but... Basically, you've got a, a MOSFET and there's a resistive divider to give a sample of the final output voltage over here back into the IC. It could decide to shut down if it didn't feel that was right. Um, I'm not sure what other reasons it would decide to shut down. But it sure seems like it is choosing to shut down on its own. And I've got to figure out why. I decided to take a closer look at those two mega ohm resistors. There's three two mega ohm resistors in series, and they're part of that feedback uh, network, uh, bringing back a sample of the output voltage back into the IC so we can see what it's producing. And one of those resistors seemed to be a little bit off value. Um, I was checking them in circuit, so you really can't really go by that, but I lifted them, and they still seem to be, one of them seemed to be a little off value. There were two, two, there were three two mega ohms, I didn't have uh, two mega ohms, but I did have three mega ohms. So I replaced those uh, two, those three two mega ohms with two three mega ohms. So still six mega ohms total resistance. And we're going to see if that makes any difference. Um, I think I'm reconnected. I'm, I am again looking at the voltage across our filter capacitors right here. Nothing else should be enabled. We just want to see it produce a proper. Uh, PFC voltage. Um, okay, then we turn on the AC and we should get, you know, the, the rectified voltage DC, uh, 160 volts. And now we're going to enable our PFC circuit with 13 volts. And we get 400 volts. It overshot it a little. It's coming back down. Of course, remember also it is unloaded. There's no load on it right now. 406 volts unloaded and it's holding. It's not shutting down. I think that's an improvement. Uh, so I need to reconnect the uh, 12 volt 
generator IC, the H HR 1001C. So I've got that 39 ohm resistor lifted so that it's not getting any supply voltage, so it cannot run. And we're going to see if this thing will come up and run and make us some 12 volts reliably. All right, we have put everything back on, I think. Um, I reconnected that 39 ohm resistor, so now the 12 volt circuit should be active. I also put back the original MOSFET, the one that I had taken off, uh, that, you know, that's connected to those 2 mega ohm resistors. I put back the original MOSFET. I don't think anything was wrong with it. I don't think so, but I did put it back. And let's see. I think we are ready to try this. I'm still metering the uh, voltage across the capacitors here. I want to see what that is when it you know, gets a load on it. And we have our uh, load, 12 volt load over there. So I'm going to turn this on. There's 160 volts. And let me get my little handy dandy jumper here. Let's see if we get some 12 volts and what we get across our capacitors. There we go. Making 12 volts, 406 volts. I think that's a little high. So quite likely I need to get some 2 mega ohm resistors that need to be reasonably uh, tight tolerance because that's what determines that PFC output voltage. Yep. I think I do need some. I think she's working. She's hanging in there. Making 12 volts at 6 amps. That's just a little bit low. Now I might be able to sort through these uh, three mega ohm resistors and find some better ones. Um, but um, these are 5% tolerance, looks like. The original ones there, I don't know what their tolerance was, but it's probably pretty pretty high tolerance. But uh, let me see. That, that's going to work. These capacitors are rated at 450 volts, so I don't think it's a problem, really. Um, let's see. I think we're ready to put this thing back together and try it out there in that uh, PS4 Slim chassis. It's been patiently waiting out there. Let's see if it'll power that thing. We are back out in the garage. I've had this PS4 Slim running for several days, actually, on this supply. Uh, it, that seems to be the only issue. Now, we've got a repair supply in there. Let's just see if it will power it. That looks good. Yeah, I've got a disc in there. I had it playing a game. Logo. But yeah, she's going to work. It worked in there on the bench. It should work out here. Although this is probably putting a little more of a load on it than I was in there. But uh, there we are. Wake up. Go on in there into the uh, desktop. Launch a game. We are working. Well, that was a uh, that was a fight on that one. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it took me longer than maybe it should, but sometimes they're tough ones. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up, and I will see you in the very next repair. So long for now.